What shall we talk about today? Roop, 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 one the hoop with me. Randaranyaka Upanishad. Free, right. That one. Uh, Upanishad characterizes the highest reality as the fearless. Would you please expand on this? <laughs> Can't even pronounce it. <laughs> which is the largest Upanishad hmm, among the major ten Upanishads. Hmm? Technical at points, but not very clear, you know, because it's written in mystical language and it keeps on making statements without really interpreting them. But to understand them better, uh, you have some wonderful interpreters of it like Shankaracharya who goes very, very deeply into that. The reason why it says become fearless is for one purpose, that, the, that treading the spiritual path is like walking on the razor's edge. It is not a path for cowards or instant coffee seekers. It is a gradual process which day by day uplifts you and makes you fearless. Now, fearlessness does not come all of a sudden. The cause of fear is, as I've said before, Annihilation, you fear to die, that is the primal cause of being fearful. You are full of fear, and when you are full of fear, you are a fool. F double O L. What is there to fear? Hmm? Now the common thing that a person fears is to lose the money which they have accumulated, the lo losing someone's love, that's another fear. The fear of the unknown which comes under the category of death. Hmm? And then there are other categories. Uh, the wife cooks, she does her best and still she has a fear that will my husband like it or not. The only thing really to fear is fear. Hmm? Now the word fear less implies have less fear. Hmm? And this is a gradual process. How do we go about in this process of becoming fearless? Hmm? Does the air fear blowing around in this room? Do the trees fear in its wonderful dance? Hmm? Does it fear? Does the leaves fear the symphony that blows through it? Now, the way to become fearless is firstly to confront the fear that you fear. It requires a con confrontation. This comes about from spiritual strength. 
where you go beyond the mind of thought, although a bit of it is there, you start off with that. Because you cannot separate the intellect from divinity because the intellect is also divinity. But the trouble with the intellect is that because of the sanskaras, hmm, the intellect becomes perverted and not think or rationalize as it should. Now here was the proper rationalization of the tiger. And so I couldn't pay my rent and they're going to chuck me out of the house. And I'm under the sky. What is the difference? Hmm? It's only that little asbestos synthesized piece of a ceiling with some tin or whatever you have over it. Hmm? That's preventing me from being with this sky. Hmm? That vast sky, which is far greater and bigger hmm? than this little roof we have on this building. Hmm? And your fear of being thrown out of your house disappears. Because you can merge yourself into the vastness and feel part of the vastness. And when you have that fearlessness, the heat or the cold dissipates by itself. So in this world, there is nothing at all to fear. And when it penetrates the ego's self, there the fear really begins because the ego forever wants to perpetuate itself. It does not want to annihilate itself and that is the greatest stumbling block towards reaching divinity. Because the ego with the help of the intellect and the lower mind, which we call the conscious mind, through which all those qualities and the chitta, the memory box or subconscious, hmm, feeds the ego self hmm, and makes it more fearful. But the ego self can be used in a better way, in its real proper way. This fear goes in a long way, goes a long way. Right. It even goes into the relationships between husband and wife. Many times the husband and wife or two lovers or whatever, they sleep together. And the man feels he's impotent, which is not true. No man, even if he reaches the age of 80, can become impotent. Hmm? But the very fear that he is impotent will make you feel impotent. And that very mental fear translates itself into its organic equal. So fear is the great stumbling block in our progress on the path to spirituality. And nowadays I do observe in the younger folk, their minds are so empty hmm, of constructive thought that the mind can never remain empty. So they fill it with all the changalangs, all that noise, uh, and forget the meaning of quietude. So quietude is one of the ingredients, one of the requisites in becoming fearless. Therefore, meditation is a path that brings the quietude, that brings strength in you, that whatever might come, let it come. Who cares? The greatest phrase in the English language is 
so what? So freedom is what we want that brings us fearlessness while bondage brings fear. I mean, that, that does not mean we have to be rash and irrational. Hmm? We've got to be rational. You take a calculated risk and not fear. Hmm? Because we live in a conventional society. Hmm? It's no sense you know, buying a two million dollar mansion when you're earning 500 bucks a month. That's stupid. So, fearlessness is a quality that a man can create within himself through spiritual practices, through the proper mental attitude. So, I'm going to die tomorrow, and so are you. By tomorrow I mean year's time, two years, five years, ten years. What is time? A clicker of a second. Hmm? And you start fearing the unknown. Hmm? Because you cannot recollect what has happened in your previous lives. We have died so many times. You can recollect them if you open up more and more of your 12 billion brain cells uh, and uh, give the memory box of the subconscious its fullest scope. Uh, then you can go back into past lives. Uh, I have done that, so I'm talking of practical experience. Yes. And you will find that going into the beyond, the basic fear hmm, of leaving this body is a very, very pleasurable experience. Hmm? We spoke about death during the week. It's a very pleasurable experience. You're going into a dimension. You're an adventurer. Hmm? And what is better? than a wonderful, fine adventure. But there is venture. You venture out. You venture out of the present mold. And when you venture out, get out of the present mold, then you become fearless. People fear losing their jobs. Hmm? So what? Lose the damn job. In any case, 99.9% .9 of people are not happy in their jobs. They're not. Very few people are happy in their jobs. Because the mind is always going further and further and further and looking for something better. Hmm? And for example, all these thugs and thieves uh, hmm? that go about brandishing their pistols and shooting up people. Do you know that they go through so much fear that actually cowards at heart? Hmm? But with the perversion, they commit all these acts. Hmm? So, now the point is this, that because of perversion, we become fearful. Show me any person in this world that has not some kind of perversion. There is some kink there. And everyone is kinky. So what happens here is this, that we all are living in a lunatic asylum. So fearlessness is one of the pivots that takes you to life's happiness, that makes you feel that inner joy, 
that takes away all the insecurities from you because inadequacy, insecurity are all allied to fearfulness. Hmm? I start writing an article or a book or giving a talk hmm? and if I'm fearful that will I get over properly or not? Hmm? My talk, or the book, or the article would become very stinted. It wouldn't be that flow which you feel coming from me. Hmm? No inhibitions. Con confronting the fear and inquiring into the cause of fear. Yes, because when you can confront, you automatically would inquire what that fear is all about. Yes, eh? And, as the saying goes, that proper diagnosis is half the cure. So be fearless, and fearlessness also involves awareness. So the more you are aware hmm, of yourself and the circumstances around you, you lose fear because you are aware that there is always a silver lining hmm, on the other side of the dark cloud. And that brings us to faith. Not faith in an object but faith in oneself. I can do it. I can be fearless because I can do it. And when you say I can do it, you take a challenge upon yourself. Hmm? And when you take a challenge upon yourself, you fight. When you take a challenge upon yourself, you fight. And in that very fighting against the fear, the fear loses its momentum. Yes. Hmm? You know, like the painter can take that fear hmm? and paint a picture of that fear, projecting it outside him. Because fear is more inside you. It is introversial while we need to externalize it. So the artist would paint the picture of the fear he has in mind and look at it objectively. That's another way of losing fear. When you look at the fear objectively, which is the blood brother of analysis. So if the mind can't analyze it, see the fear objectively and you will find that there is nothing to fear because fear is not existent. Fear essentially is not part of your nature. Hmm? It is something that you have implanted within yourself hmm? through circumstances, environments, sanskaras, impressions, all those things. But it is not you. The real you is fearless, dauntless. And if a person that hasn't got the ability to analyze it or confront it can always take the path of faith. Hmm? And faith means bhakti, devotion. Hmm? But oh, there's obstacles in the way and you have so much devotion and faith that you just feel very, very sincerely, you feel it in your bones that as I proceed to this obstacle, the obstacle will be removed. You develop that attitude.
and the attitude and the way you look at things will bring about in you total fearlessness. And that's what we need. Fear nothing. For example, if you can't sleep at night, hmm? so you repeat to yourself, oh, it's also a form of fear. I can't sleep at night. Oh, tonight, I fear I won't be able to sleep. Insomnia kind of thing. Hmm? But if you say to yourself, if I can't sleep tonight, so what? Hmm? I'll sleep some other night and I'll pay the debt, sleep debt. And when you go with that thought that if I can't sleep tonight, so what? You'll fall asleep quicker because you're not fearing it. And if there's another trick you could use when you're feeling angry, hmm? get your mantra into your head. Uh, repeat it, or oh, your chant, hmm? or oh, do some pranayama, get the rhythm in your body, and you see the fear will dissipate itself. Hmm? Or even um, sing. Hmm? The same, same, same divine energy that permeates the entire universe and may that permeation of divine energy permeate every fear that you have in you and there shall be no fear thank you